race two of the opening round of the ADAC GT4 Germany. We are in Oschersleben at the Motorsport Arena. Hello, everybody. It's Aston Martin once again, locking out the front row of the grid, but it's not a Dur Motorsport one on pole position. It's a racing one one. And uh, that has Tom Wood at the wheel, the uh, British driver, a brilliant performance in qualifying this morning, putting it on pole position alongside him, yesterday's pole sitter, Indy Doncha, a legend of GT racing, and currently the top of the points, along with teammate Phil Dur, lines up second on the grid. It is once again an Aston Martin lockout, and uh, the person who's third on the grid, we are looking forward to seeing, uh, that is Henrik Still in the number 30 car, which is the Porsche 718 Cayman for WNS Motorsport, and fourth on the grid. Gabriella Djokova for Drago Racing Team ZVO. And they, that team, have just won a race in the ADAC GT Masters. So they are pumped. And Gabriella Djokova, along with her teammate Robert Haub, are in a very good position to score a win in this race. So the ADAC GT4 Germany at Oschersleben Motorsport Arena. Conditions, well, it's been sunny all day, but it's clouded over. The temperature is dropping quite rapidly. We're not expecting any rain but 14.4 degrees centigrade. And uh, you're looking on board there, the view from Mikael Schrey, the defending champions, the hope for racing by Bonk Motorsport, BMW. I have a quick moment because the cars are rolling to introduce Adam Weller alongside me. We're excited for this race, aren't we, Adam? Excited for this race and excited by the temperament of the man starting in third place. Hendrik still saw the camera, took one look at us and pointed forward, went... Uh, saying, gesturing, going, I am going for the lead into turn one. We've seen a Porsche, uh, and a, a Porsche from Allied Racing, granted, uh, in yesterday's GT Masters race, go uh, full bore into turn one. Let's see if it happens in GT4. So the starting grid coming up here for this ADAC uh, GT4 race. It's Tom Wood on pole position, the first pole position for Racing One. Indy Doncha for Door Motorsports, starting alongside, uh, making that Aston Martin front row. Henry still, he's going forward, don't you know, for WS Motorsport, Gabriella Gilcova for Drago Racing Team ZVO, they are on a roll. Roman LaRue in 007, Aston Martin once again, and Dennis Bulatov for Eastside Motorsport, good drop from him. Julian Hans says hello, Julian from Porsche Carrera Cup Germany joins us alongside Nico Handka, and they make up row four. Then it's Marek Bockman and Hugo Sasser on row five of the grid. Row six, Robin Falcon back, and defending champions, Mikhail Schrey, Gabriel Piano, a long way back for them in the Hofer Racing by Bonk Motorsport BMW. Moritz Viskirchen for Allied Racing is alongside Cedric Pirro in the Toyota. And then Finn Zulauf and Christian Kosch for Allied Racing making up row eight. Row nine, Paul Oreconic and the Holzem twins on uh, row uh, uh, nine. Row ten, Nico Gruber and uh, Matej Pavlicek. And then on row 11, Daniel Schwerfeld and Leon Wasser for W&S Motorsport. To sport. Row 12 at a grid, Tano Neumann and Stefan Bastanchev. He was very disappointed with his qualifying this morning. And on row 13, Christopher Ruhner and Tim Reiter, another the Hofer racing by Bonk Motorsport BMWs. The final row of the grid, Mikhail von Zabienski and Ricardo Dort. That is a very full grid of 28 cars around the Oschersleben Motorsport Arena, a circuit that is 3.667 kilometers around with 14 turns, seven to the left, seven to the right. Always the scene of high drama indeed, particularly into Turn 1. That is exactly where they're about to head now because they're about to go along the pit straight. They will see red lights ahead of them shortly. Those red lights will turn green and we are about to go racing for Race 2 of the weekend. The lights are red for a long time. Finally, they go green and it's Tom Wood who ducks across in front of Indy Doncha to lead by some considerable distance into Turn 1. And that is quite a, a big jump from Tom Wood, Indy Doncha slotting into second. Here come the rest of the cars, bumping over the curbs and around the hotel turn. Will they all make it? It looks like they all have. I hope I haven't spoken too soon. Now along towards Hasselroda, which is turn three. It's hard on the brakes around the lake and then back down towards turn four. You can see the lake there just past the penalty box, but look at that lead that Tom Wood has. 
significant, isn't it? He really got the jump on them there. It was a long hold on the red lights, and he took full advantage of that one. It looked as though an overwhelming majority, if not the entirety of the field, have got through the first sector of the lap unscathed, and that's often quite a battle at Oddersleben. See all of motor racing history since 1997 when it opened. It's great to see this stream of cars running through 8, 9 and 10, that little tricky S-bend. Uh, we've already said goodbye to some bollards today uh, in the other races and I'm wondering if the GT4 may see some similar fades. You just saw Gabriela Djokova just taking a little peek on the inside of Henrik still. Uh, Tom Wood is leading the way. It's felt like the red lights were on for quite a long time. I'm hoping that Tom didn't over anticipate the green lights. Uh, we will know if the stewards feel as though he has jumped. It looked like it was all fair and square from the angle we were looking at. The angle that Mikael Stray has is not the angle that he wanted. He is the defending champion of the ADAC GT4, along with Hofer racing by Bonk Motorsport. And uh, he is a long way back down the grid in P9. He's got an awful lot of work to do. They had a non-finish yesterday, uh, a diff issue. Rear axle blown diff meant that they did not finish the race, did not record any points points on the board and they are already at a disadvantage as they look to defend their title. So Tom Wood continues to stretch his legs at the front. Uh, the number six driver racing one Aston Martin. Aston Martin, Aston Martin Vantage, oh dearie me. And he is sharing driving duties with Ewan Mackay. There is a Mercedes going very wide out of the corner, getting uh, dirt on the tires, and that is gonna allow the 84 car to stretch his legs. That has got Ricardo Dort at the wheel. Yes, so that was uh, Gruber falling down there. Nico Gruber uh, having a bit of a moment and uh, getting, I think, ever so slightly suggested wide, I'm gonna say, uh, by Ricardo Dort in the 84 car. Brand allegiance, yes, team allegiance, absolutely not, as Jill <laughs> Kova once again has to cover off the uh, inside uh, into T11. And oh, there's a nice gap there, but it wasn't quite Aston Martin with, despite uh, the advances of Roman LaRue, who tried for it, didn't he? And now he's having to go defensive because Bulatov on the outside trying to find his way through in the, yes, 20. You can see it. He's gone all the way around the outside. <laughs> and he's up into P6. Uh, P5, I should say, and that's a great example of what we see time and time again. You try and make an offensive move, sometimes you fail to go defensive. They're still in a drag race, though, as they run into turns one and two. The 20 car just about holds on Bulatov uh, to fifth position. Uh, the east side motorsport Mercedes AMG breaks into the top five. So Roman LaRue in that Aston Martin. There are an awful lot of Aston Martins, and a lot of them being run by Dur Motorsport. I think they've got four of them in this race for this afternoon. Uh, you can spot them, they're green, they all look the same. That just confuses us, like we need any confusion. And uh, Roman LaRue, uh, not the leading duo motorsport, Aston Martin though, Indy Doncher is. He is running in second place behind Tom Wood. Tom Wood continues to stretch his legs, 1.6 seconds uh, to the good at the front. Mikael Stray in the hope for racing by Bonk Motorsport, BMW M4, very much caught up in the traffic. A great shot as the cars come flying past the camera that's mounted in the curb. And, uh, uh, you can see, well, that's not a corner, really. They're just taking it straight, aren't they? Yes, turn nine becomes uh, quite the irrelevance quite early on in the day. As you see there, a lot of teams, or a lot of drivers, thinking it was going to go green, it's going to go green, and then it didn't. Then they got on the brakes, and cars got into each other. It was a bit of a messy start, seemingly, yeah. for everyone except for Tom Wood who had an absolutely lightning getaway. Right, we've got a number of cars that are being uh, investigated for incorrect grid positions, and that might be perceived as a jump start. Uh, one of them is Julian Hanses, who's uh, running in P7. Julian Hanses, who was in Porsche Carrera Cup Germany last year and has moved over to this, has been very good. Also the number 18, the 15, and 31. So quite a few cars that are perceived uh, to be in correct grid positions. That might be why uh, we saw saw the red lights on a lot longer than we would normally have expected. Yeah, that certainly would correlate and uh, less than ideal. The top three breaking away then a bit. Uh, Woods, Doncia and Still. And then Gabriella Gil 
over, leading quite the significant pack of cars, including this one, the most significant of all the defending champions. Uh, still, uh, Hendrik Still and uh, Michael Mikael Schrey, uh, sorry, Gabriela Piana and Michael Schrey. I'm trying to create dream teams there, I think, a little bit. Uh, that number one car yesterday, we didn't get a go, actually, did we, Mikael Schrey? Uh, unfortunately, the car came to a stop in the hands of Piana about 15 or 20 minutes in, something wrong towards the rear of the car and uh, ended up stopped uh, just around here actually after turn 10 peeled off the track no more power to give and they need a strong result here today to uh, try and correct the record as it were so Gabrielle Chukova at the front of that queue uh, uh, she appears to be just uh, forming a queue well there's a queue forming behind her and they all look to be uh, nibbling at her heels and you wonder whether she's just struggling for pace a little bit in that Mercedes because you've got bullets of LaRue, Hansis, Hantke, Shrey, all lined up behind them. Uh, so uh, we keep an eye on that, but certainly uh, her there, Gabrielle Jakova there, is allowing the cars in front just to stretch their legs a bit, the top three, those being Wood, Doncha and Henrik still. So Jokova in P4, that big queue of cars behind her, the one, two, three though, and you can see them there, and uh, Wood has made a great start. There are no investigations involving the car number six, so he is in a good position, 1.8 seconds uh, to the good of Indy Doncha in the very similar Aston Martin, and then Hendrik still about eight tenths behind them. So, just to remind you, this race, it is 60 minutes in length. And uh, during this race, there is a mandatory pit stop window that will open. It will open 25 minutes into the race. And during, uh, well, once that window is open, every car will be required to visit the pit lane and to make a mandatory stop and driver change. The window will then close 10 minutes later when the clock strikes 35. And uh, at that point, every car will have been required to have made a stop. So, uh, we have... Uh, a while yet before the pit window opens and there will be strategy as we see the uh, number five car, Denis Bulatov, the fifth place car, Denis Bulatov, uh, making a move on Gabriel Djokova, the number 20 running side by side with Djokova, taking the long way round on the outside. It's going to be a drag race up towards turn one. They bump into each other, Djokova just trying to squeeze him out, but it looks to me like Bulatov has the legs. It's going to be under braking as they come towards turn one where this all happens. Now is Djokova going to get hung out to dry because there is LaRue also following through as well and suddenly Djokova is down two places. In terms of Bulatov's execution that was almost identical to how he got past the uh, 007 Aston Martin of Roman LaRue and funnily enough on the second run through LaRue also benefited Djokova down to sixth place unfortunately uh, she wasn't taking it lying down in the slightest. Tried to stick around the outside at turn one but that is very tricky to do. Ultimately, uh, she is now down to sixth place. That's a great shot going against the traffic. Oh, it does weird things with your head. That it does. does. Here comes our leader, Tom Wood, for racing one in the number six car. Uh, Indy Doncha, Henrik Still. Now, what can Dennis Bulatov do about Henrik Still? He's already uh, pulling a little bit clear from the cars behind. Uh, Roman LaRue in the green Aston Martin and Gabriela Djokova. You can see the gap there. The yellow car is the third place, uh, uh, Henrik Still. And the uh, black Mercedes is Bulatov in fourth place with uh, LaRue just behind. There's a bit of debris on the track there as well. The car's just avoiding that. Of course, debris can cause punctures. We did have that investigation for incorrect grid positions and a penalty lap has been awarded. Uh, now, the penalty lap uh, means that those cars will have to pass through the box, a little white box that you would have seen on the exit of turn three. They'll have to pass through that at no more than 60 kilometers an hour. It's only a 200 meter box, but it is a penalty. Now the cars that have suffered that, a car 85, that is Julian Hanses. We have action on track, carry on. We do, Shrey almost uh, ended up merging the BMWs and the Mercedes there. Hanses uh, had to kind of, well, I think we always had to steer out of it a little bit there to avoid the front end of the M4 GT4. Thankfully no contact made. Uh, now Hanses, of course, is one of the cars that's gonna have to go through the penalty that doesn't do so on this occasion.
occasion. But keep an eye on the 85 Mercedes and look at that, the uh, Schnitzel Alp cars, both of whom have the uh, penalties applied come in, as does the Zulauf uh, driven Avia WS Motorsport entry. So only the 85 car there in seventh place left to serve the penalty lap. Uh, and when the, the Hanses does that, uh, it's going to be very costly because he's their seventh place in a huge battle. And oh, look at that, that's Jill Cobra and Hanses going side by side through eight, nine and ten. They're still side by side coming out of it despite the wildly deviating uh, racing lines. Hanses just about to head and trying to benefit from all of this is Mikhail oh. Frey. He's not going to find the inside line there. The two Mercedes are still side by side. Jill Cobra has to relinquish that one. A little bit of carbon fibre, I believe, off of Hans's car. He's going uh, rallying, seemingly, and, well, he's going to have to serve his penalty lap soon. Shrey on the attack. So uh, Hansis will have three laps in which he has to serve that penalty. Uh, so the cars were Julian Hansis, the uh, number 18 car was Marek Bachmann. Uh, car 15 was Robin Falkenbach. At 31, we saw Finn Zulaf and we saw them passing through the penalty box. But now, once again, Shrey and Piana, uh, Trey and Julkova, you got me on it now, are uh, going hammer and tongs in it. On the inside comes Shrey, and uh, it looks like the BMW might just make it past Gabriel. Real Piana, they run side by side down towards the corner. And uh, the uh, Djokova car, though, has the inside line. Trey going the long way round. And you can see on board, he's giving it everything. Djokova just trying to squeeze the BMW as much as she can into the next corner. Was there a little bit of contact? You saw Stray just correcting it. But now the BMW drops in front. And Gabriel Piana, though, Gabriel <laughs> Djokova coming back. And Mikael Stray. Uh, but Stray shuts the door and uh, Mikael Stray takes that position away from Gabriel Djokova made that and into sixth place. Mikhail Shrey there, yeah, threw into sixth place because uh, the 85 Mercedes uh, served the pen. So uh, after this moment and the flattening of a bollard once again, <laughs> as oh, and some of the under tray taken off the car there as well, we saw from that angle. So Hans has served the penalty while Jill Kova and Shrey were side by side. And uh, the end result was a move not for seventh, but for sixth. So with all of that done and dusted, it's Tom Wood who leads the way from Mickey Doncha. And uh, then uh, Henrik Still, Dennis Bulatov, Roman LaRue in fifth place. Julian Hanses uh, is no longer in sixth, so it'll be Mikhail Schrey. And Hanses, that penalty lap that you just saw him take, has dropped him all the way down to 17th place. That is a disaster. The penalty lap is not uh, meant to be a massive penalty, but when they're running so close together like that, uh, that's really hurt him. And he's dropped all the way back to 17th place. Yep, it's not often that the penalty lap turns out to be completely race-defining in that manner. Sometimes it can cost you a position or two, but uh, 11 places? Goodness me. That is massive, isn't it? Uh, the penalty lap was introduced to take away the severity of a drive-through penalty, but that one is going to really hurt Julian Hanses. He didn't get a drive yesterday uh, because of issues with the car. It was Theo Overhaus who uh, uh, kicked off proceedings and uh, didn't finish the race, didn't even get to the pit stop window. So this this is Julian Hans's debut in ADAC GT4 Germany. <laughs> and you see the uh, punching of the air by Mikhail Stray once he'd got past Djokova. And uh, that really, he really uh, did have to work hard for that. Uh, but he made it stick, and Shrey is up to P6, so good progress when you uh, consider that he started down in 12th on the grid. Zulaf there, also recovering from a penalty lap uh, just behind the Von Zabienski driven uh, BMW from the Schubert Motorsport stable. And that car looks a bit taily, I must say. The M4 looking to break loose at pretty much every apex is pointed at at the moment. And uh, well, Zulaf trying to look up the inside as a result of that at the final corner does have a little bit of a draw alongside. But the BMW, historically speaking, very quick in a straight line. And uh, that tool. Uh, allows him to draw back ahead for 23rd place, as is always the case in the ADAC GT4 Germany. Uh, 20, 20th place, 25th place, always hardly contested, as is the lead. They're still going at it, and the Porsche looks like it's going through at long last.
So uh, a couple of wheels onto the dirt for Mikhail von Zabienski. That wouldn't help him at all, and he loses that position uh, to the number 31 of Finn Zulaf. And Zulaf uh, fighting his way back up through the pack. It's a long way down, though. Uh, they are down in 23rd position. Ahead now, Leon Vassathur, uh, who was driving the KTM Crossbow last year, uh, now in a Porsche, quite a different animal, in 22nd, is next up the road, and Zulaf will be honing in on him. So, Wood still leads the way. Tom Wood by some 2.4 seconds over Indy Doncha. Uh, of course, this will uh, all be thrown up in the air once we get to the pit stop window. We're looking at the fight for 17th and, uh, uh, and 16th place, and that's Julian Hanses once again getting mixed up with it. He's out onto the dirt and he's losing more and more places. So, Julian Hanses potentially an element of him just trying a little bit too hard here and uh, dropping like a stone back through the pack. Yeah, textbook red mist there, really. Tried a, uh, not even really a 50-50, a 70-30 against his favour uh, up against Pavel Cech. And instead of gaining the position, he lost three. So there are battles raging all the way through the field in this. There's the KTM crossbow, the number 89, being driven by Matej Pavlicek. And uh, that is uh, in 16th place. Uh, but the car behind is challenging for position. The Mercedes-Benz uh, looks to the inside of the KTM crossbow. There's certainly no way through there. The number 18 car being driven by Marek Bokman. And uh, still, now we said that overtaking was quite difficult here at the Oschersleben Motorsport Arena. As we look again at Julian Hans says getting together with Pavlicek, a little bit of rubbing and uh, tries to make it stick. Pavlicek comes back and uh, this is where it all comes undone for Julian Hanses. Uh, Pavlicek just shuts that door and of course Matej Pavlicek, very experienced behind the KTM crossbow. Julian Hanses out onto the dirt and there's not a lot of traction to be had out there. Definitely not, so I think I'd uh, reassess my fractions. It wasn't a 70-30, that was generous. It was a bit of a moment, wasn't it? Uh, at the apex of T11, and Pavlicek continues to defend up against uh, now another Mercedes out of the Schnitzel Elm stable, as you said. That is Marek Buckman at the wheel. Just behind them is uh, Schwerfeld in the 33 Porsche. Uh, Daniel Schwerfeld will hand over to Axel Sartingen later. And here is the battle for fifth position I made that fourth position, I'll correct myself. Uh, Bulatov and LaRue uh, having a good scrap here uh, for fourth place. And uh, they have broken free uh, from Shrey behind. Of course, there was a, a kind of a separating of those cars after they uh, got their way past Gabriela Jilkova earlier on. So the Aston Martin has been the weapon of choice here this weekend in the ADAC GT4 Germany. And Roman de Roo in fifth place, uh, challenging Dennis Bulatov for that fourth position. Ahead of him, Henrik Still, Indy Doncha and Tom Wood. But look at this scrap going on up and down the pack. The cars are fighting each other, left, right and centre, heading down towards turn four. There's not a lot of overtaking opportunities here. The track is narrow. Uh, it's not so much a corner as a bit of a kink that they have to go around. Then this sharp corner uh, up towards turn seven and then we start to get some more overtaken opportunities as we head towards turn eight the chicane Matej Pavlicek at the front of that queue in the number 89 car but still there's no way past for Bokman and Daniel Schwerfeld uh, this <laughs> you get the feeling this is all going to just start to explode before too long don't you <laughs> You do, no such explosiveness for Tom Wood. He had an explosive getaway, but ever since then, it's looked more like a, I don't know, a country cruise in an Aston Martin uh, through Northern Germany. Uh, Tom Wood having a great drive to this point. It's a bit more fraught for Indy Doncha though, because uh, Hendrik still, still in the hunter mode that he showed us before we went racing. The gestures didn't quite pay off. He didn't do what he was planning, uh, but he's still there in third place and still looking likely to challenge. And uh, there, there is the Allied Racing mob further back, the Caymans en masse. So uh, the uh, Porsche's there and there is a Porsche at the front that's trying to ruin the Aston Martin party. Uh, Henrik still trying to find a route past Indy Doncha. And uh, still, 
still can't. Uh, you're looking at Kosh and Koenig, uh, Paul Oral Koenig in the number 22, and uh, Christian Kosh, who is in the trophy championship. Of course, we have uh, the junior championship, the trophy championship, and the driver's championship taking place again. Matej Pavlicek coming under pressure in the number 89 car. Uh, that's 16th place. Uh, Bookman trying to find a route pass, trying to get into the points. Can you believe this scrap is not even for a points paying position? Such is the competitiveness. Uh, Daniel Schwerfeld also getting involved there in the number 33 car. Behind Schwerfeld is Robin Falkenbach. Julian Hanses trying to fight back from a disastrous couple of laps earlier on. And uh, the 24 you're looking at there just coming towards us. Hugo Sasser, that is the P8. And Hugo Sasser and Nico Hantke. So Sasser uh, moving forwards, uh, one of the up and coming superstars, sharing with Mike David Altman in the Aston Martin, fighting the Aston Martin, but also getting involved. That's Jill uh, is that Jill Cobra? Yeah. Any chance? It might be. So Gabriel Jokova now in between. So Hugo Sasser uh, trying to find a way past Hantke has let uh, Jill Cobra through. Now Jill Jokova uh, is uh, alongside uh, Hatka as they head towards turn one and Jokova is fighting back. Sasha following her through and uh, Nico Hatka has relegated positions but now Hugo Sasha goes deep and Nico Hatka coming back on the inside is Aston Martin versus Aston Martin and finally Sasha closes that one off but now there's a Toyota joining the battle and not two but three allied racing Porsches in there and another of the Dura Motorsport Aston Martins. It's a big scrum of cars, that much is certain. And Gabriella Jolkova clearly didn't like being in amongst it, wanted to head the biggest pack on the uh, track once again. And she did so, taking great advantage of the inter Aston battle. Sasser was the first to fall, and a good run through the final corner allowed her to draw up back into seventh place. Very well done. It's such a good example of a round here when you make a challenge for position, you do risk getting railroaded and losing positions. And Hugo Sasser was trying to make a move forwards and, of course, uh, ended up losing a position in doing so to the car that was behind him. Now we are looking again at the number 30, Henrik Still, with Indy Doncha in front. And Henrik Still has been hounding him all the way. It has been four tenths of a second for a while, but now it's down to about two tenths of a second between the two cars. Uh, and I I think that Henrik Still, who is a fairly experienced pilot, and uh, Indy Doncha, well, I, would, I wouldn't like to say who's the more experienced out of the two of them, but it still can get past Doncha. I'm sure he would like to set about Wood, who is leading this race. Yeah, Wood is currently seemingly with everything under control, though, as Piro once again looks to the inside uh, in the Piro Sports Toyota, the eponymous team for the driver starting the car, and uh, certainly uh, he's trying to get away past that Supra. Uh, sorry, trying to get away past the Aston in that Supra, uh, and he's got to do so while keeping, what, three Porsches, all from the same team, and the Duomo Motorsports uh, Aston Martin at bay. But look at this, that could be the move as they approach T4. They call this part of the circuit the triple, and on this occasion there was no way forth for the Supra. So the Toyota Supra made its debut at Hockenheim last year and was pretty dominant and uh, did a good job yesterday finishing in third place on the podium. A little bit further back than they really wanted at the moment. And that's an Aston Martin. <laughs> Hello. Look after the camera, please. We're going to use that again at Red Bull Ring. So uh, corner, what corner? We're just going straight on. That's what they say. Uh, so the battles rage on and there is Cedric Pirro in 10th place, Nico Hanska just in front and uh, Sasa there and this is further back and again Pavlicek in the KTM crossbow and once again the number 18 car challenging with Marek Bachmann at the wheel and uh, the schnitzel arm racing Mercedes AMG looking the quicker of the two. Uh, the KTM really uh, proving to be a little bit of a roadblock for the Mercedes at the moment onto the pit straight they come now can Bachmann find a route past here without letting uh, the other of the Mercedes the uh, fellow Mercedes through for that position into turn one they come into turn one they come and Zulaf there was uh, practically all the way off the track uh, you've also just behind him got Hansus the troubled 85 uh, CV Aston Martin at uh, Mercedes uh, the Aston does have a Mercedes engine, that's my excuse. Uh, but uh, he got through there uh, into 21st position oh. as the KTM 
strays wide. So now here we go, the uh, a gap up the inside is all that Buchmann needed, so they run side by side. Now will the Schnitzelam teammate be able to follow through? No, he's too far back, but Pavlicak is finally relegated from that position, and Buchmann is through and into 16th place. Falcon back, now eyeing up where his teammate is, but Pavlicak is fighting back. There's not quite any contact. I thought they were going to go together there. Pavlicak fighting back. They bump across the chicane, but the Schnitzelam Mercedes is in front at the moment now it looks as though he should be able to pull clear a battle further back and there's dirt being thrown up into the air it's all happening this time robin falkenbach challenging pavlicek and daniel schwerfeld also trying to get involved he wants to pick up any position if those two cars uh, get involved with each other katie crossbow running without a rear wing which looks slightly unusual in this day and age i think you observed that didn't you i did i thought to be honest with you that there was a part missing but uh, i found I found out that there's an Evo spec that came out quite recently that disregards the rear wing and uh, there's been some discourse among the KTM GT4 community as to which spec is better uh, but the little Evo KTM crossbow holding on very strong there as the pit window is open. So into the pits comes the number 24 car Hugo Sasser handing, handing over to Mike David Orman. There's a whole string of cars that are coming in. Uh, there's a bollard. Anybody got any new bollards? Because that one's not going to get used again. Here they come into the pits. This pit window is open for 10 minutes and uh, uh, the drivers have got a minimum time limit that they've got, to they've got to take to get in. 95 seconds, they mustn't go below that from pit entry to pit exit, otherwise they'll pick up a penalty. We just saw Stefan Bastandajev there uh, getting out of the 23 car, and I want to give him a shout out. That overdrive racing Porsche 718 Cayman uh, was 24th on the grid. He managed to get it up to 15th uh, before getting into the pits. Around this circuit, uh, in such a tightly packed field, that is really good going. Bastandajev has a lot to be proud of. I think off that stint, and that's the fifth place battle, isn't it? That uh, had a moment there. The fourth place battle, I should say. Bulatov and LaRue have come together. That is the exit of turn 12, where they've come together, and it doesn't look like that, uh, that Mercedes is going anywhere quickly. So he is stranded there. What we might find is that we go full course yellow, and you can see they got together, LaRue and Bulatov making contact on the corner. Car 20 is now stranded out there, and uh, there is every possibility we might have to go full course yellow to uh, retrieve that. It was in the chicane and uh, you can see 20 trying to shut the door. 007 was in there already. The two cars go spinning. Uh, this is the view from uh, Mikhail Stray as he goes past it all. The two cars, well, they, it's all happened by the time he gets to the scene of the crime. Uh, the car 20 looks like it is stranded. So we may find a full course yellow. They surely cannot leave that car there. Uh, the yellow flags are flying in turn 12 at the moment. Moment. That means the drivers need to slow down and be prepared to stop uh, because there is a driver out on the track. Uh, what race control are trying to do is to go full course yellow rather than safety car when the pit window is open because they don't want to see drivers advantaged or disadvantaged uh, by a safety car when the pit window is open. Uh, but uh, a number of cars are in the pits, have pitted already. Uh, Bulatov is not going to make it to the pits and uh, the number Number 20 car uh, will not have Dennis Meyer at the wheel uh, because it's stranded out on track. So this is uh, just throwing a real random element. You'll remember at Hockenheim last year uh, that uh, in one of the races, the full course yellow actually threw the print window. The leader is in. Uh, the full course yellow really throwed through the uh, pit pit strategy out of the window with drivers right, left and centre not really knowing uh, what was the best way to go forward. Tom Wood into the pits, 95 seconds from pit entry to pit exit. Uh, also in it looks like Mikael Schrey. He's going to be handing the Hofer Racing by Bonk Motorsport BMW over to Gabriel Piana. Uh, but it really is... Uh, uh, all happening here, we still haven't gone to a full course yellow. It's a yellow in turns 11 and 12. It might be that they wait for the pit window to close and then bring out a full safety car. Who knows, but this is the leader into the pits now. Taking the driving seat will be Ewan Mackay in the Racing One Aston Martin Vantage. Tom Wood has done such a good job. They uh, got an 11th place yesterday. They were really looking to improve on that, potentially. A race-winning pit stop coming up here. Ewan Mackay, though, is uh, going to have to do a lot of hard work. Uh, the race is only half over. 
And uh, some heated discussions going on in the pits. And uh, you can see the uh, Black Falcon team tax. Well, it's good to see that uh, actually uh, no hard feelings and uh, hands are shaken. And uh, always a bit nervous listening in in case of what we might see. Uh, so uh, you can see from the graphic on the, the screen that a number of the cars have pitted. There's still quite a few that's still left to go. We've got five and a half minutes of this pit window still open. And uh, you can see that the Holzams are into the pits, uh, the Holzam twins, and uh, we've already got up to plus 60 on the clock. Uh, so the indications would be that they've got a problem and will not be rejoining this race. It's always difficult having an argument when you've got a camera in your face, isn't it? Uh, so <laughs> it, it didn't seem to, to deter Daniel Schwerfeld at all, actually. He was firmly telling off Finn Zulav there um, in a language not native to myself. Therefore, I'm ignorant to what he said and I can only speculate. But I think a lot of it wasn't as friendly as some of that body language, slightly forced body language, uh, implied. And there we go, Gabriele Piana now in the car uh, after I tried to uh, make it so earlier, despite the fact it was Miguel Trey at the wheel. So really Doncha still leads, Hedis Hendrick still, Gabriel Jakova and Roman LaRue uh, showing in fourth place. Uh, so they have yet to pit. Moritz Viskirchen, uh, Bokman, Pavlovchek, Neumann also there. Kosh is into the pits. Uh, so uh, it looks as though they're going to leave that car out on track, the number 20 car out on track of Denis Bulatov uh, for the time being. I still think that we will get a full course yellow or a safety car at some point or the other uh, once this pit window is closed. Maybe not. Uh, we've got dramas. This may well bring out a safety car. The 33 car, that's uh, Axel Sartingen. The bad thing is not all of these cars are on the same lap, Ethan. This is some oh. Pat Marker stuff going on here. The 32 car of Wasatha are involved in that. He was as high as 12th place. Some of the others are a lap further down. That's really so bad. This is high drama. Now, this surely has got to bring out uh, some kind of safety car, a full course yellow, uh, because those cars are not going anywhere. Is that uh, the 31? Yes, it is the 31 car. So it is uh, Nikolai Moller Madsen, uh, who came into this uh, as a bit of a championship favorite. He got onto the grass, and it looks as though the other two were potentially innocent parties in a Nikolai Moller Madsen accident. Uh, the three cars all all getting together. It's uh, a pile of Porsches, I think, is what we'd say. And here comes Moller Madsen, just uh, bowls the other two cars off the track. And uh, they were innocent bystanders in that. The leaders uh, were almost caught up in that as well. You saw them behind. Now, Axel Sartingen came out onto Moller Madsen. He's the oh, one that triggered wrong. the incident, I'm afraid. Yeah. Uh, Moller Madsen uh, ended up on the grass, and from that point, he was a passenger. But I think the initial uh, blame may lay Axel Sartingen's feet and what's very funny about that is we just saw the other two drivers for those we exact did. cars having a dispute yeah. and I imagine most of the team has now joined in for good measure. I think that is a definite possibility so the accident started some way back uh, you can see discussions being had, but hey, chaps, uh, you probably want to find out uh, how you ended up in that position. Look at the video. It says uh, bits hanging off the Black Falcon Porsche as well. So it really has been a lively couple of laps, and we've lost several drivers from this race. Uh, we really need that pit window to close so we can retrieve some of these. Uh, it's uh, There are cars stranded out on the track, and... Uh, Yes, uh, teammates are looking on all that hard work for nothing uh, out behind the tire wall, which is good. We've still got two minutes of this pit window remaining. Gabriela Djokova in all of that is now leading the race because Hendrik still is into the pits. Uh, LaRue is still out, uh, but no, no, LaRue is still out on track. Uh, so Djokova leading the way uh, ahead of Bachmann. Uh, still now into the pits, as is LaRue. We've still got Pavlicek and Neumann still to come. This is the car that was leading the way. Uh, now uh, it says Ewan Mackay at the wheel, but has now got an awful lot of company. Phil Dorr, who took over from Indy Doncha, is uh, harassing that car. This is potentially the lead battle that you are witnessing. Very much so, yes. Uh, Mackay managed to just about get ahead of the rejoining number 69 car of uh, Phil Dirt and uh, Dirt 
will try and push on, but of course he's on the cold tyres. The ambient temperatures here at uh, Oshersleben are certainly quite low at the moment, and here you see it. Mackay just about pips him uh, to the post and uh, keeps that car ahead. So then it's going to be a battle of the Astons by the looks of it, if not at the sharp end, certainly in that direction. So the 26-year-old Ewan Mackay has got an awful lot of pressure on his shoulders as he uh, uh, leads ahead of what will be a potential a net lead of this race, the Phil Dur car behind uh, Gabriel Piana. What a great drive from him uh, just behind them. Uh, now, uh, other cars come into the pits. I think it was Bachmann that we saw just peeling off into the pits just now. Uh, Gabriel Jilkova, well, she will need to be in uh, on this lap if she isn't already because time is running out. There's only 20 seconds left of this pit window and uh, very very shortly it will all shake out we will see how we're getting on there is the car that uh, will be leading the race it's Mackay when all is done and dusted the pit window is now about to close we'll wait for Jilkova and Bachmann to rejoin but it will be Ewan Mackay who inherits the lead but I believe we are going to get a safety car or a full course yellow very shortly you'd expect so uh, Krumberg just joined the race there between these two Astons that is of course the car that Hendrik still was driving just a few moments ago so Max Krumberg has split the Astons uh, as he rejoined and here we get another action replay of that and for a second consecutive lap Ewan Mackay was about, what, two tenths of a second away <laughs> from being beaten. Uh, it's been exacting, hasn't it, to this point? So you see how close it is at the front and how the pit window can really vary things and uh, throw a spanner in the works. Here comes uh, what will be the leader of this race, Ewan Mackay, with Kronberg behind and Dua behind him. And in the background, Gabriel Piano, who's made a brilliant uh, recovery along with teammate Mikhail Schrey from that 12th place starting positions. They are the defending champions in the ADAC GT4 Germany. A wide open track in front. Let's see what that BMW can do as it hones in on Phil Dorr, who's up in front. You can see Robert Haub is now on board the number four car. Here we go. We predicted this might happen. The safety car is on standby. And uh, the fact that the cameras are pointing at it would indicate to me that its engine is possibly running. And uh, this might end up being a safety car period about to be inflicted upon us. Uh, the incident that you saw is being referred to the stewards. Uh, none of the cars involved in it are continuing or are going to score points this afternoon. Uh, so uh, it's something that can be sorted out after the race has finished because it's not going to affect the result but you can see the engine is running on the safety car and I do believe that is about to join us and we will get the wrecked cars removed here is the uh 007 car with a drive through penalty. Now that hasn't uh, flashed up on our screens. Uh, so causing a collision, that's now just appeared. So the 007 car for causing a collision. That was with the number 20 car, of course. That's the reason we're about to have, well, one of the reasons, there's been a few, uh, that we're about to have that uh, safety car out uh, because of uh, the incident with Dennis Bulatov earlier on. Uh, so that's why that's happened. Unfortunately, the 007 car uh, will fall well out of the top 20 but if it's any consolation you're about to be in a very big pack of cars because we're expecting the safety car there, there it is, is. The safety car right on cue uh, and there you go it's walkie talkie in hand car on track and well doesn't this throw a cat among the pigeons? So we predicted this some 10 minutes ago and uh, all credit to the race directors and race stewards. They wanted to keep it going because when you have a safety car or full course yellow, when the pit window is open, it can massively advantage and disadvantage teams. And so they've uh, got to the end of the pit window and now they've brought the safety car out. But one thing it will do is close the pack right up. Uh, they say, it's an old cliche, but they say safety cars breed safety cars. And with the uh, pack, uh, which it will be in single file once we go back to green flag conditions uh, this could be a very lively dash for the cash it's going to take a few minutes to clear this lot up because there are well there's a, a, a few wrecked cars all around the circuit uh, that is out on turn three uh, the Hasseroda and uh, those are the cars that uh, we saw earlier uh, there is also the number 20 car out on turn 12 that needs to be retrieved or put into just somewhere a little bit safer so I think we're going to have a few minutes before this goes back to green flag. Yes, I wholeheartedly agree. It's going to be a little while yet, isn't it? Uh, the recovery process won't be the work of two minutes. Um, 
It's going to be interesting to see quite how much time we do have left, though, once we do go back to green flag. Yeah, probably not a great deal of time. So uh, to summarise, uh, it's Ewan Mackay who leads the way uh, from Kronberg in the number 30 car. Then it's Dur, Phil Dur, uh, Piana, who has made great progress from 12th on the grid in 4th and uh, will surely be thinking about a podium. In fifth place, Mike David Ortman, who took over from Hugo Sasser. Vincent Andronaco in the Allied Racing Porsche in sixth. And then Robert Howard, who took over from Gabriela Djokova in seventh. Marcel Lanez in eighth. Uh, Hartwig Lefterov uh, round out to the top ten. And of course, these are all going to be in a single file. But I would say keep an eye, particularly on Gabriel Piana, uh, when this race restarts. Because uh, they were coming into this race very much with a bit of damage limitation, especially having scored no points yesterday uh, but suddenly are in a position for a podium if not better if not better indeed <laughs> would it not be quite the uh, turn of events to be retired in the first race and then win the second race it's not the ideal way to uh, start your championship defense i grant you uh, but <laughs> As of 24 hours ago, yes, it probably is the ideal uh, if they can get themselves up to the sharp end. But uh, let's not minimise the task at hand with the likes of uh, you and Mackay there in the lead. He's going to be uh, he's going to be very difficult to get past. He's been very handy uh, in GT4 cars wherever uh, he has ended up sat in the Max Kronberg as well. Certainly knows his way uh, around a Porsche Cayman. And then you've got, of course, Phil Durr who. Uh, will no doubt uh, be on the offensive, yes, but uh, Gabriella Pia uh, Gabriel Piana uh, there as well in the top four. That's a very competitive top really four, is. actually. Just reading through it there, I've got myself excited. That's going to be a lot of fun, that is. Yes, this might not be the last safety car we get this afternoon. <laughs> um, uh, Teo Overhouse took over from uh, Julian Hansess in the number 85 cars up to 15th place, you can see from your display there. Uh, Teo Overhouse, a uh, young driver uh, who has uh, just been signed up at the last minute for this series and was very competitive yesterday so we're going to keep an eye on that one uh, there's going to be a great opportunity for some of these drivers that are further back to make up a bit of ground because the cars will be in single file when we go back to green flag conditions and uh ewan mckay is going to have an awful lot of uh, pressure from max kronberg and phil door behind uh, that car being number 20 the number's big enough are they uh, so, uh, yes, <laughs> they're going to retrieve it uh, from the track and get it on the back of the truck. And uh, shortly we will be back to green flag conditions. Just want to say as well, Gabriele Piana there in fourth place. It would be quite something if he can wrangle his way into a victory here. An Italian driver in a BMW at Oschersleben winning. There's a, there's a ring of bells there. 2005 <laughs> World Touring Car Championship. Alex Zanardi claimed his first win back. Uh, well, first win after his uh, horrible accident at Lausitz in 2001. That was his first victory back in motorsports. And uh, that was such an emotional day and one that you can find a lot of footage of. And wouldn't it be something to have the echoes of that some 17 years later with uh, Gabriele Piana in the M4? Adam Weller, ladies and gentlemen, the walking encyclopedia. Uh, would tell you that Mikael Schreier and Gabriel Piana in the Hofer Racing by Bonk B Motorsport BMW won both races here last year. Uh, so they know their way around this Osterschleben circuit. Uh, they did, in fact, win four, the first four races of the season, if my memory serves me correctly. And uh, they were very dominant, and it looked like they were going to have the championship sewn up early on. Oh, dear, that's not really going to come out with a bit of teacup, is it? That's... Uh, looking a little bit second hand that is they're going to shovel the remnants up onto the back of the truck and take it back they've got a month to repair it before we reappear at the red bull ring but that's an awful lot of damage to that porsche they're going to have to go through a few rounds at the stuttgart spanners and spares department aren't they that's unfortunate but the uh, wns crew well and equ well equipped to uh, look after the caymans it's just a shame that really two of their cars off in one incident and uh, yeah, not good at all. Look at that graphic. You can see the big movers. Pavel Lefterov wow. up 14 places. Uh, Max Rosam up 10 places. Uh, Winter up 10. Uh, and Vincent Andronaco in the uh, Allied Racing Porsche. That's a very impressive drive. So in the number 22 car, Vincent Andronaco took over from Paul Oral Koenig. We knew they were going to be a potent combination. Paul Oral Koenig guested a few drives last year and was excellent. And Vincent Andronaco, one of the real 
real up-and-coming superstars in GT racing. Uh, pretty fearless. He's only 16 years old, and uh, that is great progress up to P6. And you see a look into the stewards' room, but uh, just to circle back around to that 22 Allied Porsche and Andronaco, I mean, we saw that car in amongst the scrum uh, that was developing behind the uh, KTM and Matej Pavlicek uh, earlier on. Uh, so the fact that it's gone from that pack all the way up to sixth position is hugely impressive. Mm. And uh, also impressive, we've got uh, cars on flatbeds quite quickly here uh, today at uh, Oschersleben. I think the only thing we haven't seen fully cleared yet is potentially that number 20 Mercedes but uh, I think we may well get a uh, little over a dozen minutes of racing here yeah it's going to just be a couple more minutes before we get back to green flag racing but do not go anywhere this is going to go all the way to the flag Ewan Mackay is going to feel pressure like he hasn't felt for a very long time uh, Max Kronberg behind Phil Dorr keep an eye on Gabriel Piana and Mike David Ortman Vincent Andronaco what can he do from there Robert Howe he's pretty useful at the wheel of that Mercedes Marcel Lanez, uh, Alex Hartwig and Pavel Lefteroff rounding out the top 10. They are all going to have an eye on the podium positions. Uh, there are lots of points that could be gained, but there can be an awful lot of points that could be lost uh, on this restart. We have no notification yet. We do now. Safety car is in on this lap, so they really have got themselves moving. So safety car lights will go out and Ewan Mackay will become the de facto safety car. He will control the pace of the pack and uh, he will try to back the pack up he will try to allow the safety car to get away and then it will be his decision when he hits the accelerator his job will be to catch Max Kronberg napping and try and leave him behind his teammate did that at the start of the race he left the entire pack behind now he needs to emulate that Ewan Mackay is going to be leading this pack around the final corner in a bit they're up towards turn 11 at the moment just heading towards turn 11 you can see the safety car with the lights off disappearing into the distance weaving to keep the heat into the tires Mackay will want to give the impression that he's not going at the very moment that he does hit the accelerator turns 11 turns 12 then they head up to turn 13 and he will be going We're riding on board with Gabriel Piana and Mackay has already gone and he's already opened up a, a gap Max Kronberg behind uh, did not anticipate it as well as he'd like to have done Phil Durr did though so Durr is eyeing up Kronberg but keep an eye on Piana in the BMW Mike David Altman also Andronaco what can Andronaco do there weaving up the straights they come towards turn one flashing the light Phil Durr has a little look on the inside of Kronberg just to try and distract him bumping across the curves but look at the lead that Mackay has already you and Mackay did very well there he uh got it set up to go as straight as possible through turn 12 and uh, slingshotted out of the corner uh, to get restarted as around the outside goes Andronaco. In fact, uh, uh, Ortman just about covers it off, but Andronaco uh, wants to get further up. They've already made up 11 positions. Is it going to be 12 in about a quarter of time? They're doing some weight shedding. Goodness me. And he's through. Andronaco, even with the best efforts of Ortman, could not do it. It was a valiant effort, a valiant attempt at defending from Mike David Ortman, uh, but Andronaco would not be denied. So, we told you he was fearless, didn't we? Vincent Andronaco, 16 years old, moving forwards, he's past uh, Mike David Ortman, now Gabriel Piana up ahead of him as well. Surely Piano's not going to uh, lose a position to him. Look at this, this is a replay. The, you can see Dirk going a little bit wide out the corner, but further back, the Aston Martin and the Porsche get together. Blue smoke up in the air, a little bit of debris as well. We're lucky that both cars considered on their way, but Andronaco stealing that position away, now homing in on the BMW. Uh, he's done more than homing in, he's found a gap past. So, past Piana, Andronaco up into fourth place. Goodness me, that was unexpected, wasn't it? I thought Piana may have had an issue there. It looked like he slowed down, but no, he's right back on the attack. Andronaco under pressure. Piana not going to let that one lie if he can possibly avoid it. But Andronaco, the form man at the moment out there on circuit. Vincent Andronaco has picked up the baton uh, from Paul Arl Koenig, and he is going for it. Look at Mike David Ortman, and uh, there was smoke coming from the BMW there. I don't know if they made contact, where there's an issue, but now Mike David 
David Ormond on the inside of Gabriel Piana. And Piana is starting to lose places. He's uh, drag racing through to the next corner up at the front. Andrew Narco has got away and Mike David Ormond moves through. So Piana, having made such a good job earlier on in the race, is now going backwards. So Mike David Ormond through into fifth place. But let's keep an eye on Vincent Andrew Narco because clearly he's got his eyes on a podium position. The body language off of Piana there as he got overtaken suggests to me that he knows something's not quite right. He didn't seem at all invested in trying to hold off uh, the Aston Martin beside him. So I have to wait and see. And Look at this! Sorry. Yeah, it's all right. Andronaco is well worthy of the excitement at the moment. Vince Andronaco well invested in getting to his podium. But look at this. Phil Durs on the move. He goes to the inside of Kronberg. Oh, Andronaco says sure. He's Me get too. Both. And he's got third place. <laughs> Let's see if he can get to second by the time they get to turn one. Vincent Andronaco, where have you been? Now he is through. He's got past Kronberg. He's going to get Phil Durr at this rate. What an incredible drive from Vincent Andronaco. So now hoping in on the BMW is a brave man who stands in the way of that Porsche. He takes to the inside. And is he going to make it through to second place? They run through to turn three. Still, Durr is just holding on. Andronaco switches to the inside. And he is through the number 22 car. What an absolutely epic drive. Someone get on the phone to Mackay because there is a Porsche coming up and it's coming very quickly. I feel like I've just watched a heist. He's gone <laughs> through the entire top five Mackay aside and he's just dominated, albeit with a little bit of a touch there. But uh, I think that might just be judged on the legal side of things, we hope. But great driving, uh, determined driving, I'd oh, say. There was more than a touch oh, there into the corner, yeah. I have to say. And uh, the stewards, uh, they're, well, they're not flat it up is to be investigated. This is exactly what the spectators that are packing the terraces here at the Oshersleben Motorsport Arena have come to see. Proper racing, door handle racing, as we see the Toyota trying to come back past uh, Robert Howe. So the number 12 car being driven by Marcel Lanez, uh, trying to find a route past the Mercedes further back, but we're keeping an eye on Andrew Narco. He's up 15 places, and uh, we'll keep an eye on that and uh, see how he is doing in comparison to our leader when we uh, get the timing beam. We've still got another, well, just a little under nine minutes plus one lap remaining. And this has been very exciting, but is that uh, Dur that's got back past Andronaco that we're looking at? Yes, it is. Uh, but now they're changing places again. So Andronaco, I don't, that wasn't a replay. Dur had got past Andronaco, but now Andronaco is back again. So much action to keep track of. And Linares got through as well on Howe, but turn one. Uh, so Linares threw in seventh place. He had a nose ahead at the line, uh, but he got the move completed at turn one. So lots going on all at once. Andronaco and Dur, I get the feeling we may not have written the last chapter of that story. I'd like to have seen what happened there with Phil Dur to get past Andronaco and then Andronaco got him back again, but now you can see it. There's our leader, Ewan Mackay. Uh, Vincent Andronaco in the Team Allied Racing Porsche in second place has now broken clear of Phil Durr. And uh, let's have another look here so we can see that Durr had got past Andronaco. Uh, maybe a little bit of a touch and the... Uh, oh, that's why. That's why, So yeah. we've just had a notification through on our timing screens that they had to change position. So Andronaco had to surrender the position uh, due to an incorrect overtaking position. Don't throw it all away here and onto the dirt. So Andronaco had to do it twice with Phil Durr. The stewards instructed him to give the place back because the first pass was not not a legal one, and uh, so he did that, and then he got past him again. So, Andronaco driving the wheels off it, but the 84 car goes spinning. That is Ferdinand Winter. Is this going to bring out a safety car? I think it might, because that car is stranded in the gravel trap. The CV Performance Group Mercedes looks like it's not going to go anywhere. It's got together with the 007 Dua Motorsport Aston Martin with Ben Dua at the lead. So, that's out on turn 13. Surely we're going to see another safety car.
Quite possibly. It's not in a good position, is it? It's not very far removed from the circuit there in that part of the gravel trap. We're going to have to wait and see uh, that incident being investigated understandably. And here we ride on board with the BMW of Gabriella Piana, who has held on, held on quite nicely to the back of Kronberg since uh, letting that car uh, go past a few laps ago. But uh, not looking like an imminent overtake is possible, although the BMW is strong in a straight line. He's closing through T10. Let's see if he can get a good run off the corner. No, just the apex speed letting him down as we go to safety car conditions. So the safety car is out. We thought that might happen as we just see uh, a bit of uh, challenging for position further back for one of the other allied racing Porsches. Uh, so this really is going to be a dash for the cash because I expect we will go back to green flag conditions, but I expect there will probably be only two or three minutes left on the clock by the time they've moved the stranded car. Uh, this could be very exciting because Andronarco hasn't given up on the top step of the podium. You could tell that. Yes, it's going to be a fine margin, really, as to whether we get this back to green or not. Uh, if we get more than one lap, it's a miracle. I think um, they might. I think they might. They've been very quick yeah, this afternoon. I, I think they, you know, they probably get a pickup truck to just pull it back into pit lane by the tow hook on the rear. I'd suggest is probably how they'll handle it. Let's just hope that they can do so in a fast fashion. So we've got five and a half minutes left of this race, plus one lap. The race leader, Ewan Mackay, and he took over from Tom Wood in the racing one, Aston Martin. They've had a good gap at the front for most of the race. We're uh, looking again at a replay from Gabriel Piana further back. And uh, there is uh, Max Kronberg just ahead of him. And uh, this is Piana bumping across the curbs. And uh, this was the view that he had. Yeah, so that was uh, just over a lap before the safety car was called there. That was uh, Ortman getting past Kronberg. Uh, so, yes, the Aston Martin making up a position. The Aston's very strong here at Oschersleben this weekend. That move uh, for fourth place means that we've got three of them in the top four. Absolutely brilliant stuff. And, uh, right, time to just take stock for a moment as uh, the... Uh, Stranded car is lifted and uh, removed from the circuit. They've got to it nice and quickly. Uh, four minutes and 20 seconds left. Uh, the audience here has been thoroughly entertained. The weather has got significantly cooler as this afternoon has gone on. We're at about uh, just a little under 14 degrees centigrade, but uh, the spectators have been thoroughly entertained here. And uh, yeah, we can do with some of those chips. So uh, you can see the... Uh, Mercedes being uh, dragged from the track with uh, Ferdinand Winter just watching on. You can see from his body language how fed up he is about that. And uh, I think we might get back to some green flag racing for at least a couple of laps. That's, uh, I'm optimistic and uh, we shall see. And if that does happen, well, <laughs> anything could happen. It has been a very lively race already. And uh, <laughs> smoke belching from the, uh, the truck that is dragging it out of the gravel trap. And uh, we will see very shortly what's going to happen. Uh, the drone has been giving us great footage all afternoon. All weekend, in fact. The drivers just trying to keep heat in the tyres of those cars. And uh, they cool down very quickly when they're not running at racing speed, running behind the safety car at a significantly reduced speed. It's Ewan Mackay who leads the way from Vincent Andronarco, Phil Durr, Mike David Ortman, uh, Max Kronberg, Gabriel Piana, Marcel Lenez, Robert Haub, Alex Hartwig, and Pavel Lefteroff are rounding out the top 10. They're all running nose to tail. And uh, if this race does go back to green flag conditions, Ewan Mackay is going to have to do that job of uh, back in the field up once again and getting the jump. And uh, he's going to have to catch Vincent Andronarco snoozing because you just know, looking at that car, he's got a point to prove. And Andronarco has got his eyes on getting past. You just know it. Safety car is in on this lap. So we are going to get a couple of laps of racing. You can see that Mackay dropped back and uh, trying to keep heat in the tyres. He hit the accelerator pretty early on last time around. Uh, Andrew Narco, he's not weaving, he's waiting, and he's anticipated it well. So, safety car is in, 
We're about to go back to the green flag. Makai has already hit the accelerator. Agronarko, you see the back end of the car just snaking slightly, but he is with Makai. We are heading out of the final turn across the line to start another lap. It's Makai leading the way from Andronarco. They've already left Phil Dorn behind. Surely it's between these two, another the Allied Racing Porsche is getting out onto the dirt. Look at Andronarco looking to the left and to the right of the Aston Martin into turn one. Round to Hotel, Andronarco taking a tighter line through and they run side by side. You and Makai moves to the outside, tries to fight back. The two cars running side by side into turn three. Andronarco on the outside, Makai on the inside. Andronarco is through and into the lead. The team allied racing Porsche catching the Aston Martin. He is a man on a mission. How did he do that? Uh, you and Makai will be absolutely gutted. He and Tom Wood have led this race from the absolute beginning, but now they surrender that position. It's Vincent Agronarco and more contact behind. That was Robert Howe getting into the back of Pavel Lefterov. Uh, Lefterov manages to keep it running, so he should be able to keep, and he does, he rejoins. But Robert Howe, a big punt into the back of the Porsche. But look at this, the story of the weekend. And uh, there is Robert Howe just pulling off into the runoff area. So it looks as though his afternoon is over after all that hard work from Howe and Gabriela Djokova. But what an incredible headline for this race. There you see that punt once again. And in fact, Lefterov had got out uh, of the power because uh, it was Viscursion in front that he had gone up the back of. So a bit of a sandwich going on. I feel terrible for that team. The Overdrive guys have had a brilliant run from 24th place. They've got into the top 10 to 9th. And that's how it ends. That's not great, uh, unfortunately, for them. But at least they're going to get to the finish. And actually, they're about where they started, which I guess in one way is OK. Uh, lots going on further back. Andronarko, though, is our leader and getting away from Mackay. There was a bit of touching and rubbing going on between the two of them going into T3. Uh, but uh, nonetheless, uh, it's now really going to be a matter of defending for second place for Mackay because Durr and indeed Ortman seem to be closing in on him slightly. So the clock has struck zero. We are on to the plus one lap. Our leader is Vincent Andronarco, who has left Mackay uh, behind in second place. It looked like the Aston Martin was going to walk this race. It has been dominant all afternoon, but nobody banked on the number 22 Porsche coming through, uh, taking the lead. Phil Dorr in third place, Mike David Ortman in fourth. Uh, but in the closing stages of this race uh, it is the Porsche leading the way, bumping across the curbs, and uh, it is absolute high drama. And you can see the gap that Andronaka has over Mackay already. So we have uh, the plus one lap, the one more lap to go, and then uh, we will be in the conclusion of this race. You can see the Mercedes, well, that bit's been hanging off it for ages, and now it's just gone completely. That was an almost an absolute duplicate of what the other driver in the 007 did earlier on. It wasn't Ben Durr that uh, took out the number 20 there early on, it was Roman LaRue, but it seems to run in the car's uh, very chassis. Uh, just having a bit of an incident there with the 85 car, which was also embattled earlier on. Uh, it was in the hands of Teo Overhouse. Uh, sorry, uh, Julian Hansers. And now Teo Overhouse uh, is uh, getting involved in some contact as well. Do they want to have a car left by the end of this race? I'm not so sure. So Teo Overhouse in the battle as he took over from Julian Hansers. Uh, Already referred to the stewards uh, yeah, as well. Yeah, well, you'd expect that really, <laughs> wouldn't you? Yeah. So we are into the final lap of the race. We've had uh, uh, the timed running, the plus one lap, and we now are in the closing stages. It's Vincent Andronarco who has come through to take the lead of this race he started down in uh, looking at that that was, oh, was down on the ninth row of the grid along with teammate Paul Oral Koenig has uh, fought their way forwards uh, Tom Wood Ewan Mackay had uh, led this race pretty well from the beginning until this point, but Andronarco came through. He has no fear. That Porsche has been in the wars, but he has made it work. He has come through. He's taken each position off bit by bit. He's now into the last couple of corners for Team Allied Racing. Vincent Andronarco into the final corner of the race, out onto the pit straight. The chequered flag waves at car number 22. 
as he crosses the line to win race two of the weekend, race two of the season, an extraordinary drive for the Allied, Mot Allied Motorsport Porsche. Absolutely brilliant stuff. Mackay crossing the line, he'll be highly disappointed with second place after that. Phil Dorr in third, and then Mike David Altman and Gabriel Piana. Well, fifth place, not quite what he was hoping uh, when that race restarted, but still a good points haul. Amazing, 17th to first for the Allied Racing team. Vincent Andrianaco uh, with the legwork there towards the end after Paul Oral Koenig gave him a decent foundation to work from. Very impressive stuff. And the Allied Racing crew are delighted. They've got a lot of horses uh, in this race. And that one, was actually the one that was last among their cars. Uh, the other two Allied Racing cars on the grid were ahead of it uh, coming in, uh, coming out of qualifying. I don't think they'd have expected the 22 to win, but here we are. Well, we always knew that Andrew Narco was going to be good. He was quickest in uh, pre-season testing, and uh, he won on his debut in the GT4 European Series earlier this year. Uh, but what a comeback that was. He took over from Paul Oral Koenig in the Allied Racing Porsche 718 came on to win this race ahead of uh, Ewan Mackay and uh, Tom Wood with Phil Durr and Indy Doncha rounding out the top three. You can see the rest of the results there. Mike David Orman and Hugo Sasser in fourth ahead of the defending champions Gabriel Piana and Mikael Schrey. Max Kronberg and Henrik Still will be disappointed with sixth place I think. Uh, here come the rest of the places on your screen but that was an extraordinary race, an extraordinary drive and one that we will remember for a very long time. I heartily agree with that sound effect, yeah. What a race it was. Fabulous stuff from the entire field. No matter where we looked, no matter where the cameras turned, 20th or 2nd, we uh, had fighting all the way down the order. A few casualties of some of the exuberant Just... moves that were made, uh, as you can see on the graphic. But goodness me, what a race it was. A well-deserved victory for Vincent Andrianaco, and uh, he will be elated, I hope, if I don't see sheer ecstasy out of that young man after that drive, uh, I'd be very worried for him because he deserves uh, to be happy with that. And uh, moves up to second in the points championship, Indy Doncha and Phil Durr. Uh, consistency, they've got a 16-point lead in the championship already, so that just shows that consistency pays off. And uh, uh, Wood and Mackay in, uh, also in second place effectively with the same deficit of points. So uh, into the pit lane comes Andronaco. Uh, when you think that yesterday they finished in 23rd position, uh, this is more what he was thinking and uh, absolutely stunning stuff. I still don't know uh, how he did that. I really don't. I think I might have blown a gasket slightly. So uh, yeah, I uh, sounded like Marge Simpson. Uh, <laughs> and uh, a big applause from the team as he climbs from the car. Team Allied Racing, who uh, are real legends in GT racing. And uh, Jan Kasperlik, the boss, will be delighted with that. And the team have competed every year of the ADAC GT4 Championship in Germany so far. And were the team champions in 2020. I'm in a Get fucking se second safety car. I know. I had it. Uh, it wasn't it. <laughs> and you can just hear. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. Ewan Mackay and Tom Wood just uh, comparing notes, and clearly, second place on any other day they'd be delighted with, but that uh, a uh, disappointment to them. It looked like they'd got this completely sewn up. And uh, as you heard them say, it was the second safety car that really threw them. There is a driver of the day, driver of the weekend, I'd say, Vincent Andronaco, who, along with Paul Oral Koenig, Koenig have uh, stamped their mark on this race. Phil Durr and Indy Doncha. In third place, there's Indy Doncha, a bit of a legend in GT racing. He's won many races over the years. Lead the championship will take a bit of stopping already. I don't know what that means, but I'm sure it was very good, Indy Doncha. And uh, great to see him on the grid for the ADAC GT4.
nicht meine Intention dahinter. But there is the man that is going to be stealing the headlines, Vincent Andronarco, along with Paul Oral Koenig. So, uh, the Dur Motorsport team with uh, Indy Doncha and Phil Dur. Yeah, the two of them uh, conferring and discussing after what was a fabulous motor race. Uh, uh, the spares departments all across the GT4 community will be the ones that uh, profit from this, but uh, in a less literal sense, I think all of us uh, profit from seeing such a fabulous race. Pose for the pictures, lads, for good measure. Uh, Indy Doncia, uh, I'm sure, Really enjoying the fact that he's teaming uh, with Phil Durr, a very capable duo, a very strong duo, uh, when it comes to the championship and the uh, points table that we saw a few moments ago uh, conveyed that better than I ever could. Uh, so, yeah, it's going to be it's going to be celebrations all round from Durr uh, and the team. Well, the team is dirt, of course, I should say. Uh, here is the moment, then, that the race was won. The Allied Racing 22 Porsche crossing the line to take a magnificent victory at Oschersleben from 17th on the grid. It was a stunning drive uh, from Vincent Andrianarco in the closing stages of the race. And Paul Oral Koenig uh, doing a fabulous job at the start of the race as well. Kept himself out of trouble in what was a very hectic and fraught pack in the mid-teens. And then once he handed the baton over to Andrianarco, magic seemed to be in the air. It really did, didn't it? I mean, that was stunning. Uh, something uh, that we will remember for a very long time. Osher Sleben, 2022, you have provided us with everything we wanted and more, and uh, just incredible. There's a slow mo of third place. Phil Dor, Indy Doncha for Dur Motorsport and the Aston Martin GT4. And. Uh, put themselves firmly at the top of the points championship in second place also in the Aston Martin but this time for racing one Ewan Mackay and Tom Wood the two British drivers will be disappointed because they thought they were going to dominate this one they didn't count on the car that came home in first place the Porsche 718 Cayman of Allied Racing being driven by Vincent Andronarco and Paul Oral Koenig Two German drivers taking this race by the scruff of the neck and giving it a complete shake. So there you can see the points standing. Eddie Dodger and Phil Dorr is consistency that wins championships. Uh, a Four-way fight uh, for second, four-way tie for second place. Koenig, Andronarko, Wood and Mackay with Sasa and Ortman uh, just behind them. Then uh, Cedric Piro, Marcel Lanez in fifth place, 18 points adrift ahead of Roman Leroux, Ben Dur. Uh, the rest of the points scrolling through and uh, do check out the ADAC website where all of these points and all of the stories will be confirmed and uh, we will uh, bring you any updates from that. There's Patrick Simon on standby. He's got plenty to talk about with these drivers uh, when he interviews them, that is for sure. And uh, in the cool down room, just getting ready for the trophy presentation. So, introducing them out onto the podium very shortly. Indy Doncha and uh, Phil Dur. Platz 2 für Racing 1 und Tom Woods und Ewan McKay. Ewan McKay, Ewan McKay. 
pronounce it how you will. We say Mackay. And Tom Wood on the uh, second step of the podium. But the headline stealers, Paul Laurel Koenig and Vincent Andronaco. Brilliant stuff to the top step of the podium. Surely championship contenders for the 2022 GT4 Germany title. And uh, from Team Allied Racing receiving the team trophy. It's time for the national anthem. The bit that strikes me about that podium is how many young drivers there are there. And you can just see these young drivers coming through the ranks. And Indy Doncha kind of looking over his shoulder. I've never considered Indy Doncha to be a more senior driver. But uh, compared to some of these, so when you think Vincent Andronaco is just 16 years old, this is the future of GT racing that you are seeing on the podium. And it is, in fact, the present of GT racing as well. And uh, uh, these young chargers, they're coming through the ranks. And and uh, they're challenging the old boys. They're making them look over their shoulders. And uh, those two on the top step of the podium really are going to be two to watch. 